Folks, how we doing? Thanks for stopping by today. We are gonna talk about a common question that I'm asked enough to make this video. So we're looking at a small area. However, you can replicate this times as big of an area as you have to do. The question of the day is how do you level out a bumpy lawn, a bumpy field, a bumpy pasture? How do you level these areas out? Well, the biggest challenge with these areas that you're going to deal with is sod, all right? Or maybe it's weeds and sod, or it's all that organic matter that's on the surface that's rooted in there, all right? And most customers, when they reach out to me, they're looking for a tool or tools to accomplish this renovation. The first thing that they mention is using a box blade or a lamp plane. And if you have sod, those are not gonna be the right tools to use. They are very challenging because of the root systems. And if you have the scarifiers or the shanks that are on those tools, you may think I can rip through that surface, rip it all up, and then just use the box blade or the plane just to kind of pull it all to the side. But what you're gonna find is it's just creating a huge mess. Those shanks, are gonna rip through the ground every six, eight, 10 inches apart. You're gonna to have to drive back and forth over and over and over again to get all of the different root clumps worked up. And then you're gonna to have to drive all over it again, over and over and over and over again to repeatedly collect all that material. You're gonna wind up with a gigantic pile of it or multiple piles of it scattered all about that you have to then clean up with a bucket. It's just gonna be a long, arduous, tedious process that's not gonna give you great results. On top of that, you're stripping away a lot of good organic material that should be there to help reseed your pasture, your lawn, whatever it is. Basically, those nutrients that you would want to have in the soil to begin with to help give it a good start. What I have found, and we've done this actually in, in many different scenarios, we've, we've used tillers, okay? We've used a tiller right here. And if you follow the channel, this area was actually littered with stumps, just like this one. There's one that's just off to the side a little bit, an area that we haven't renovated, but stumps just like this one, this whole area was full of them. And we used our stump wrecker, we dug all those out and made a big old mess, okay? There were holes here and piles of dirt around and then the stumps, of course, that we got out of there. But then we just kind of used our bucket and pushed the dirt back in those, those holes where the stumps were at just to get it kind of a, a rough level. Then we came back through with a tiller and we tilled this whole area, all right? We didn't till just the areas that had the bumps, we just tilled everything so that it worked the entire surface up consistently, right? And we did that two or three times, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so what that's going to do is it's gonna break up consistently all of the side clumps here. It doesn't mean it's gonna get rid of every single last one and break it down into super fine matter, but it's doing it repeatedly across the whole area so it's smooth and consistent and you can work with it. And the great part is it leaves all that organic matter right there. It's right there where it needs to be, where it's gonna do its best work helping to regrow the grass or um, the orchard grasses or whatever it is that you're planting in that area that you want to succeed. And so we did most of this work last spring, okay? We dug out the stumps, I tilled everything up, and then I used a dethatcher rake. You could also use a landscape rake if you have that on hand or depending on what your long-term application is. You want a tool that's versatile, a landscape rake or a dethatcher, either one is super versatile and this is just one application for it. But I took the dethatcher and raked everything to one side. So there were still some you know, little sod clumps and uh, there were some sticks and some other little bits of debris in here, raked those all to one side, it was a lot less material. And, and the rakes and the dethatchers, they're gonna let the dirt kind of fall out for the most part. You're just stuck with the debris that you don't want there. So it's still leaving a lot of the nutrients there as well. Got what you see here, okay? And then, of course, what happened? Well, we had no rain, all right? I kept waiting for there to be rain in the forecast to seed this area. And we had a super dry spring and most of the summer as well. And so I didn't do anything. I didn't put any seed down at that point because it wasn't gonna be successful. And there were some weeds that were growing up here and there. And so what I did is when I came back in the fall when I was planting food plots, I repeated that process. I tilled it up one more time, okay? Which was really easy to do because I'd previously tilled it. Then I came back through and used the Thatcher rake one more time just to get a nice final level, right? Because that rake, whether it's the Thatcher or the landscape rake is one long plane, right? It's at the same level. And so you can get a five foot or a six foot or an eight foot, whatever size rake you want to get, one grade, okay? So it makes it 
much more consistent back and forth to be a level surface. At that point, I seeded. I used our Befco seeder, broadcast seeded this area, and then I used my rake one more time to kind of help cover all that seed up and give it the best possible chance for germination. Did that in, it was either late August or early September. Actually, that's not true. It was late September. I got to it a little bit late. And so this is what you see going on. And so it, the grass, the seedlings all got a good start for now. Had about maybe a month or so of uh, decent growing conditions in the fall. And this will be great next spring. And in fact, we actually had sprinklers put in down in this area here. So we'll be able to irrigate this, water this on a regular basis and, uh, and maintain it just like part of our yard. But the same concept, the same process can be applied to whether it's a little, just a little patch here that's what, 40 by 80 feet, or if you're doing a two or three acre renovation. You don't have to do the whole thing at one time. You can still break it down into chunks, maybe a quarter here and a quarter there. Maybe get your process down, right? Do a smaller area the first time, see if you're doing everything in the right order, the right sequence that you want to do, and then just repeat that on the rest of it. And it, it can make it seem like it's not an insurmountable task either. But I'm telling you, the first thing you can do, a lot of folks don't like to spray, but if you can spray, if you're okay with that and kill all the grass and the weeds, that's gonna weaken the root system and make the rest of the job a lot easier. If you don't wanna spray, then I would at least scalp your field or your lawn or whatever it is. Scalp it so it's, if the sun's hitting it, it's burning the grass and basically killing it at that point. And maybe scalp it again if there's still anything existing. The idea being you wanna weaken those root systems as much as possible because it's gonna make your life a lot easier for the rest of this project. So after you accomplish that step, that's when you come through with the tiller. Tilling's fun, it's a great job. I mean, it's amazing the results, the before and after results that you can get with a tiller. There's no tool like it, it's just incredible. And you think they're just for putting in food plots and gardens, but they're for so much more. We actually use it for our, our, our driveway, our gravel driveway installations. You wanna peel out topsoil when you're putting in a driveway. And again, to make that topsoil easily reusable, not full of sod clumps, a great way to do that is to till it up first, right? Because it just makes everything consistent and, and, and breaks down as you have it sitting there in your sod pile, then you can scoop out some bucket full and use it in different areas of your, of your property and different projects that you have coming up. Instead of having big piles of dirt that you're then picking out a whole hunk of sod and have to throw to the side, that stuff's already chopped up with the tiller. So they're great tools to have, very handy to have around, and you get creative, you can find more ways to use it. So again, after getting done tilling, that's when you come through with your rake, do all that final grading, take it as far as you want, right? I mean, if it, depending if it's just a rough pasture, if it's gonna be a yard, you spend more or less time on there depending on the application at hand. At that point is when you're gonna seed, use that rake again to lightly cover up the seed so it has good seed to soil germination, apply some water and fertilizer, and away you go. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So folks, there you have it. That is a video that's in response and hopefully for you future viewers that are out there well if you have the same question that you email me i will be sending you a link to this video and hoping that it helps you now if you're looking for any of these tools if you need sprayers if you need tillers if you need rakes if you need seeders well you can go to goodworkstractors.com we sell and ship those tools around the country every day of the week and if you want to make sure you get set up with the right tool to fit your needs just shoot us an email give us the specifics of your project, give us your tractor making your model. We'll get you set up so that you have everything the right way the first time around. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.